Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope it's fantastic. Everything here is great. Um, Chris asked another excellent question that I can turn into an entire episode today. So we're going to do it again. We're going to keep this whole questions with Chris thing rolling because I'm really enjoying having topic primers. So if you want to send in topic primers, feel free to do so. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the phone, but you can, and uh, you can always just text it or whatever, because I, I really, really, really enjoy this. So let's just hear what Chris has to say today. Hey, friend. How are you? Hope you're having a great day. One day closer to the best four days in gaming. So speaking of gaming, I see you dabble in game design. If, if you could make a living from being a board game designer or working in the game industry, would you do it even if it killed your love of sitting down in the evening playing board games. Until next time. So that's a topic that hits really, really hard for me because it's something that I have run into many, many times in my life. I get really into things and then I immediately lose interest when money gets involved. It's always been that way. Um, part of the reason that I have stayed with Portal Games and, and helped it, my friend Ignasi for so long is because I cut money out of that deal. I don't I don't want money because when money starts getting involved, for some reason I shut down. I don't really respond to money. If somebody told me today I'm gonna give you a, a bonus if you do this, that doesn't encourage me at all. Like I'm not that doesn't excite me. It doesn't do anything for me. I mean there are things right now that I'm saving up to purchase that would be cool. I could think, oh, I could go get that if you gave me that bonus, but it just takes all the joy out of doing the thing, whatever the thing is. That being said, I think it would be or is possible for me to do that with gaming. And there's one reason why. And I actually had this conversation in email with one of you this morning. Um, For some reason, game design or, you know, it, it's something that I have been doing since the 90s. I've been trying to at least since the 90s. And for some reason, it's the thing I'm most willing to fail at. And I'm most willing to not let it, not let fear of failure hold me back. I spent two years and dozens and dozens and dozens of iterations working on a zombie game I never did get to work. And it never once discouraged me from working on it. You've seen me freeze up and not do shop projects for months or maybe even years because I'm so intimidated by the process or I'm so fearful of failure. But for some reason, I've never had that issue with game design. It's, I've never got locked inside my head thinking that I'm not good enough or whatever. And I don't know why that is, but I believe if I could hit a stride in game design, I could maintain that stride regardless of whether it was my full-time job or whatever. And I don't know that it would ever fully take away my love of sitting down and gaming. I don't game a whole lot. Uh, I know I post pictures of Ark Nova all the time because Em and I play it. We've been playing Ascension lately because I picked up Ascension Internal uh, at Dice Tower, and then we just got it on the phones. We've been playing that together. Um, we're going to play probably Gutenberg this week. I got uh, uh, the Hogwarts Legacy Battling, uh, the cooperative uh, Hogwarts game that we're going to play. I really want to play Battle. So I do play games, but it's not... I'm definitely not sitting down multiple times a week with a group of people playing board games. I don't really do that very often. It's usually just Em and I. And so I do very, very much enjoy that time, but often it's because I enjoy spending that time with Em. Not necessarily, it doesn't really have a whole lot to do with the game that we're playing. We're just enjoying 
spending time together, and we're both very competitive people, so we enjoy competing. We enjoy being in competition with each other. And I don't think that my game design could take that away, even if I was just designing games all day. And, in fact, I think that I would probably end up playing more games simply because that's where the inspiration comes from, right? Like, though I have always designed these quirky, weird things because they come from this place, like I mentioned yesterday, they come from, I want to design a two-player train game. How do I do that? Well, there's really not a resource for me to figure that out. There's not, there's a very, very short list of train games that are playable with two players that I can go do research on to find a mechanic that I like and to tweak and use on my own design. So I have to create this whole thing from scratch. And that means that what that what ends up coming out of that process is usually something that's just slightly askew of what you would expect because I'm not following, quote, the formula. I'm not I'm not doing the thing that everybody else has already done and just adding my own spin. I'm, I took a, a turn at some point and my design ends up being this more weird, clunky, sort of non-conventional thing. Um, and th the truth is I should probably play more games and, and try to bring those quirks back in line with the expected market so that I could create, uh, I could probably create more, more better things than that. Um, but I don't really necessarily have a desire to be a full-time game designer. I, I mean, it would be neat, and I would be proud of that, and my kids would be proud of that, and my family would be proud of that. Uh, you know, but there's so few of those in existence, and there are some of those, I'm not going to name names, but there are people who have had you know, one game is their thing, and that hit, and they have sold hundreds of thousands, if not millions of copies, and that has made them independently wealthy, and now they, they are a full-time game designer because they are able to retire from, you know, regular work, even though they're not actively putting out successful game after successful game. There are a few of those designers, and, you know, it, there is a potential for any one of us to, to hit that. To hit that, you know, I don't want to say a one-hit wonder because that seems really dismissive and rude. But, you know, taking that idea of having that hit be the driving force for your financial future, that could happen to anybody. And so if that were to happen, would I transition into full-time game design? Probably not. Uh, to be truthful, I don't know that I want to sit and, and think about game design full-time all the time. Um, I, I might be able to take that that success and translate it into, you know, building furniture and doing game design, like having, you know, multiple outlets. But I don't, I'm not actively seeking to be a wildly successful game designer. Uh, I do have, I did submit a few proposals uh, to publishers. So hopefully... Hopefully we'll hear soon if I have some pitch meetings lined up uh, or not for, for Gen Con this year. Um, if nothing else, I think the train game will get shown to a publisher. Uh, the I basically have a publisher in mind for that game, and if they don't take it, then chances are I'll probably just try to make it as cheaply as possible through something like the Game Crafter, make it available. Uh, or maybe launch a Kickstarter or something, I don't know. But I really have a publisher in mind for that game, and I don't really want to work with anybody else, but I would if somebody approached me and said they wanted it. So who knows? Maybe I'll have a couple more published games before too long. That would be great. I would love to have that. If no, if no, for no other reason than for the past 10 years, I've had this Scallywags box on my shelf, and that's it. Like, that's my, that's my shelf, and... When I started that journey, I thought I, I was going to have a sh like when I <laughs> I'll tell you this little bit of uh, self confidence or or I guess I don't know uh, arrogance would be the word I would use. I had to modify the contract for Scallywag so that if they ever sold international rights, I would get a minimum of three copies of the game from the international publisher. Uh, one, because I wanted to be able to answer questions about international editions if there was something wrong. 
uh, and two, because I, I dreamed of having this shelf of my games with their various language translations. I always thought that would be fun. And I thought I was going to do that. I, I was arrogant enough to believe that I was going to be a successful designer and my games were going to make it to international markets and I was going to get to have a shelf of additions. I mean, I guess I do now because I did license Scallywags to an Iranian publisher last year or two years ago. So I do technically have two versions of Scallywags. Okay, I'm going to stop talking. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends, wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should notice sounds smart is morass. It is a noun in a confusing or troublesome situation from which it is difficult to disentangle oneself. One idea is enough to organize a life and project it into unusual but viable forms, but many ideas merely lead to one Fither into a morass of their own good intentions. John Ashbery, an American poet. Morass. M-O-R-A-S-S. -S. I want to talk about this other word. Tither? Probably tither. Huh. Lead one tither into a morass. Yeah. Duh. T-H-I-T-H-E-R. I stumbled on that for some reason. I guess because we don't use it in modern English. I wonder if it'll be in the T's.